Oh my days, what a weekend of football last week. The Southampton fans were on all of our forums saying, oh, you're not talking to us, you're not giving us low love. Well, this weekend we are talking about Southampton. The Saints are live and direct on here. Steve, take it away, bruv. Cheers, mate. Yes, we are talking about Southampton this week. I did see all the messages and I did see all the comments from people saying, hang on, why aren't we talking about Southampton? But they are one of the points that we are talking about. And this is the five things that we learnt watching the Premier League this weekend. And of course, Southampton is number one. Saints are soaring. Just over one year on from that 9-0 defeat at the hands of Leicester, who could have predicted the job that Ralph Hassan Hootel is doing at Southampton? The Saints 2-0 victory over Newcastle on Friday night and a comfortable victory at that saw Saints rise to the top of the Premier League table, the first time that they've been sitting on top of the table since 1988. Just a clear indication of the sort of job that Ralph Hassan Hootel is doing with this team. Southampton are absolutely flying at the moment. Top of the league for a spell. Yes, they've been taken off it. They're fourth in the league, sitting pretty, sitting high. They are flying. This is a manager who last season people were saying, get rid of him, get him out, he's not good enough. He's got them playing some fantastic football. Hassan Hootel's getting the best out of players that we all know and we've seen around the Premier League for a long time. Players like Walker Peters, James Ward-Prowse. We're seeing these players putting in good performances and then we've got the goal-scoring exploits of the likes of Danny Ings and even Che Adams. But I have to say, special mention to Che Adams. What a performance against Newcastle. I think he was a, a perfect number nine performance. Held it up well, brought others into the game. Scored a fantastic goal early on. And you've got Ward-Prowse. Romeo just dominating things in the middle of the park. Armstrong flitting in and, in and around them. I think the way they're playing is really, really good. I think they've got a real mix of, of pace, experience, players that know what they're doing in that team. Well-drilled unit. And they're only like one winner against, against Newcastle the other day. So good luck to Southampton. Keep it up. Can they stay there? That's the question. Can they stay up there? At the end of this weekend, Saints do sit two points off top spot. They are in fourth. They are behind uh, Liverpool and Tottenham and Leicester. Uh, but they've already played so far Spurs, Chelsea and Everton. I think they're doing quite well. Um, whether or not they finish inside the top four is anybody's guess. But they've started off fantastically. It's going to be very interesting to see how far they can maintain this form. Number two, Solskjaer one, Ancelotti nil. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer added Carlo Ancelotti to the list of absolute monster named managers that he's put to the sword as Manchester United beat Everton at Goodison this weekend. A Bruno Fernandes-inspired comeback for United at Goodison was just a tonic for United fans who've seen us lose to Istanbul and Arsenal in the last week. But the United players fought for their manager this weekend, extending their away-from-home record to seven straight victories, which is phenomenally impressive. Man United needed a huge performance, a result this weekend. The pressure was absolutely on this Man United team and management to produce. And they went out there and produced. I thought, I thought that in the media there's been a bit of disrespect for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, if I'm honest. Um, people touting about that the Pochettino has been spoken to and said, I've got it under really, really, really um, a good source that there's been no conversations or anything like that going on. And they wouldn't disrespect Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in that manner. And, and, I feel that that needs to be really addressed. That that's listen. We can all say, "Ah, oh, so and so will be good. So and so will be maybe better, etc." That's just part of the game and the way it works with the media. But to say that someone's been spoken to and they're coming in imminently uh, when it's not true, I think is out of order. So the man's in the job, um, and only going to Solskjaer. His team has found a knack and a way um, of always putting a result out when he's most needed it, and this was no different. They were solid. United shown incredible character to come back from being a goal down to win at Goodison this weekend with everything that has gone against them in recent weeks. And they're just the third team that has won three consecutive away games after conceding the first goal. So there's definitely character in this Manchester United side. But listen, the talisman, who I believe is, is now the leader at Manchester United, Bruno Fernandes steps up. When the time's needed, when the time is most important, this guy stands up. He has 31 goal involvements in 33 games, if I'm not correct. That is astounding. That is just an, a, a crazy amount of the consistency, which this team needs. But from him personally, to be able to produce them numbers in a very inconsistent team, is, 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 says it all. And I thought his interview after the game where he spoke about, listen, it doesn't matter who scores, it doesn't matter who's involved, who gets the, the, the publicity, et cetera, who's in the limelight, we get the goal. And what he done at the end, he was through, he could have banged the hat trick in, and he said, it's not about that. 
his teammate was there. Who was the teammate? Cavani wants to give him that confidence to go on and be feel comfortable in a Man United shirt. Get him on the road. Get him on that run now, scoring and feeling great. Little pass to the side, bang, Cavani. One chance, one goal. So listen, it's good, and I think it gives Oli a good problem now as well. Does he stick with Martial? Does he does he throw Cavani in now because he's coming and scored a goal and he's he got a bit of confidence? His fitness is coming. These are great problems for 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 Oli, but Oli needed a result. He picked a team for the occasion and the team went out there and produced the goods and that's all you can ask. And I think Oli after the game, his interview, what I liked about his interview, he was bullshy. He was, there was a little bit of a spark there, there was a little bit of energy there that he weren't happy about something and he was trying to create a siege mentality to me. And I like that. And I think a lot of fans when you see on the forums are talking about, oh, he's always smiling and he's always happy. That's the type of guy he is, but then you want to see that edge sometimes. And I liked after the game, Oli gave us that. What remains to be seen is whether United can build on this and start getting some points on home soil. Our home form is atrocious. There's no excuses for it whatsoever. But if we can start to pick up the points like we've done on the road, then Manchester United could be a force this season. So onwards and upwards, the league table still, still doesn't look nice to look at, but listen, when I played, who looked at the league table at this time of the year? I didn't. So I hope these boys ain't and it doesn't affect any of their confidence by looking at it and see how far down the table they are. So it matters around Christmas time where you are, you have to stay in touch. You don't want to be detached and, and 12, 15 points off. If you, as long as you're in touch and distance at Christmas time, that's when you get the motion going. Number three, Chelsea dominate again. Another week and another dominant Chelsea performance. This time it was Sheffield United put to the sword as Chelsea ran out 4-1 winners at Stamford Bridge. Since the 0-0 draw with United at Old Trafford, Chelsea are on a four-match winning run where they have scored 14 goals and conceded just once in that period. And Chelsea dominate again. Frank Lampard has got these boys cooking. As the international break come at the wrong time for them, they've got momentum, they're flying up the league, they're fifth now. They look like a team who have the bit between their teeth. They understand what the manager wants. They're performing to a good level now on a consistent basis. Frank Lampard's side are clicking just months earlier than everyone predicted them to do. And maybe it's the fact that they got so many new players come in in the transfer window that we're seeing those players maybe benefiting from not having the truncated pre-season that we've seen from other clubs and those players are able to, to come in and take a little bit of pressure off the lads that have been in there previously. Namely, Hakim Ziyech. And they've got the man, the person who creates chances, the guy who takes risks, the guy who wants to open teams up at every given opportunity. Zay actually just pulling the strings from, from that right-hand side, drifting all over the park. Two assists at the weekend, could have had more. Putting the ball on a sixpence, on a plate for people to finish. I mean, it must be for a forward, for, for Timo Werner, Tammy Abraham and the, and the others. It must be just, they must be looking back and thinking, I'll make a run, this guy will find me. Has he got the best left foot in the league? Has he got the most in terms of finding people, searching people out. Has he got the most creative brain in the league at the moment, the way he's playing? Been back only a couple of weeks, but what he's done, his impact on this Chelsea team cannot go without a mention. Zayech, is he the man in form in this league? For me, I think he's been a breath of fresh air. He was one of the, the signers that went a little bit under the radar because he had an injury. But I spoke to Frank um, just after he'd signed and he picked up his injury and he was majorly disappointed. He said, Reed, this, this guy, this one is the one who can unlock things. If he's tight in a game, he's the one, especially like away from home in the big game, just bet he can open up things because he will try. He has the personality, he wants to try things. He could give it away six times on the bounce, his first six touches. He will still try that outlandish pass to create that opening. And I think that's what Frank likes and that's what the team needed. Ziyech again ran the show, created six chances, two of which resulted in assists, which is the highest total in a single game of any player in the Premier League so far this season. Lampard has got a serious array of talent at his disposal and the current form and summer investment in mind. There's no reason why I think Chelsea could not mount a title challenge this season. Number four, inconsistent Arsenal. Let's see what Joel had to say. It's Joe Bayer representing for five and I am back this week once more with my little two pence. Listen, you saw us last week as Arsenal fans. Yeah, you know, Thomas party, we had a party, you know, all over Man United's midfield, etc. And in the following week we go, we get smashed by Villa. I'm talking Ollie Watkins, Jack Grealish, Ross Barkley. They were having the party this week. 
our guys were nowhere to be seen. It was actually embarrassing. And I'll tell you what, Arsenal, we've got a lot of work to do, man, because we take one step forward, 10 steps back. It's, it's just not really good, is it? In general, the Premier League, as interested as usual, let's look at that table, man. Leicester City out there running the show and deservedly so. And of course, you've got the likes of Tottenham there. Listen, with Jose Mourinho at the helms, you can't write them off for winning the league, you know. It's a weird year. Don't matter who I support, you've got, you got to call it as it is. And Man City are going to regret not um, not closing the gap on Liverpool there because they were there for the taking. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm going to pass it back over to you guys. Rio, Steve, Joel Bear, I'll be back next week. Peace. Like Joel said, let's actually have a look at the league table because even though Arsenal did lose to Aston Villa this weekend, I think it's worth noting the good job that Aston Villa are doing. Here they are, three points off the top with a game in hand and the same goal difference as the leaders. So actually, if Aston Villa were to win their game in hand, they could find themselves top of the league. 3-0 away at Arsenal. Oli Watkins and Aston Villa love playing against the big boys, I tell you. Wow, we didn't expect it. We didn't see it against Liverpool, but they've come and done it again. An absolutely convincing performance. They had the spark, they had the energy and they had one of the main men in form in the Premier League, not just at his club, but in the Premier League, Jack Grealish. How can England keep this boy out? I seen him when he was about 15, 16 years older. I met him a couple of times. Great lad, great family. Loves his football. And he's taken the long route to get to this point. But this kid now is really enjoying himself in the Premier League. Is he, is he the most informed player in the Premier League at the moment? Would you say he's up there with the best players in the Premier League right at this moment? Is that what some might say is the unfashionable club, not one of the top, top clubs? Is that Villa committed himself back there? He's the captain. Is he up there? Listen. Performance-wise, in, especially in their big games this season, this kid has turned up and been the guy who's actually had the spark, had that energy, had that little bit of guile, that little bit of personality on the ball to take it, to commit people, to create chances and openings for other people, and obviously get on the score sheet himself. I love watching him. I don't see an England team at the moment without Jack Grealish in it. Simple as. Villa, on a good run. Can they keep it up? Villa are... <laughs> <laughs> Villa are just the third team in Premier League history to win their first three away games of the season without conceding a single goal. Think about that for a second. That's how good a job these guys are doing and they now find themselves just three points off top spot, as we said, with a game in hand. But you've got to address Arsenal though. What's going on there? They were spineless at the Emirates. They have now scored just nine goals in eight games so far this season. It's their lowest total since 1998. Arteta has got a clear vision at Arsenal and some of the stuff that we saw at Old Trafford last week was extremely impressive. But the XG was suggesting that it was a nil-nil game. And against Sheffield United before that, it should have been probably a nil-nil game. Now we're seeing Arsenal coming up short again. They're, they're not taking anywhere near enough shots. They're not creating anywhere near enough chances. And that ultimately has to lead down to what's going on with Arteta. And I think there's a little bit of inexperience at times in his team selection. Now, obviously, the win that they had at Old Trafford, that makes all the Arsenal fans and probably a lot of pundits as well go, do you know what? They might be on for a top four finish. That was a good performance and a good win that they managed to get at Old Trafford. And it was, hands up, it was. But you've also got to say collapses like we saw against Aston Villa. Uh, Joel nailed it. One step forward, several steps backwards for Arsenal. And number five, City's missed chance. City had a golden opportunity to make a real dent in Liverpool's title challenge and they failed to take that chance. Manchester City, is that a missed opportunity? A penalty to make it 2-1, to go on the wing and the man would have all put our houses on a car keys on the table to score the goal, to score that penalty, would have been Kevin De Bruyne and he misses. I couldn't believe it. I was gobsmacked. I had everything on it, I'll tell you. But listen, that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way it goes sometimes. We've seen Adama Lookman, he missed a penalty this week, albeit in very distant, different circumstances. Um, but Kevin De Bruyne didn't manage to put the ball in the back of the net. I thought, I thought Liverpool were the team who shaded it in the first half. They were the team who looked like the team were going to score more goals. They had that pace, they had the... All the attackers on the pitch, the four of them, at times was a 4-2-4, sometimes a 4-4-2, but they, they threw something different at Pep this time. I thought the first half they looked like they could have gone in a couple of goals up, um, but City hung on in there and then I think the, the game kind of fizzled out in the second half. I thought City will see this as points lost 
And I think Liverpool will look at it a point, point gained rather than anything else because they're away from home. Liverpool travel to the Etihad without Virgil van Dijk, uh, Fabinho and Thiago, which would strengthen any team and certainly would have been happier of the two sides with a 1-1, I think, coming away from that. De Bruyne's penalty miss was the first Premier League spot kick to miss the target since October 2018, when Riyad Mahrez blasted his penalty against Liverpool over the bar. Pretty spooky. It goes without saying that City and Liverpool are the two clubs that many expected to be having a bit of a tussle over the, the title this season, uh, but the former just keep on dropping points. The centre-back partnership for, for Man City is looking better and better every game. It's not perfect yet by any stretch of the imagination, but it's looking better and better. And I look at that area because I feel that was the weakness in this City team for the last year or so. And they missed the partnership at the back. And I feel now that they've got one that, that Pep is looking at and saying, this is my two guys and I'm going to continue with it. And they'll need time. Yes, they will. But I think the, the signs are very good. Um, special mention for Jesus coming back in. Big responsibility now, Guerrero's out. What a finish. The turn on Trent Alexander-Arnold was a fantastic one and the finish was Romario-esque. Um, but what a finish. Beautiful toe poke in the back, back of the net. And get him a run of games and see what the kid can do. He's been there long enough playing backup man. Can he, can he take the reins on now and, and be the main man? Time will tell. Jurgen Klopp now joins Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in being one of only two managers that have faced Pep Guardiola in more than five occasions and I've got a better head-to-head -head record. That's pretty interesting. This season is absolutely wide open. Predicting a winner from here on in is gonna be very difficult. Unfortunately, this hurts me to say as a United fan, but if Liverpool continue to collect points and look as dangerous as they did going forward against City this weekend, and, and they're doing it without Thiago, and they're doing it without Fabinho, and they're doing it without Virgil van Dijk, it does not bode well for the rest of the league that we could see them drop points this season. It's looking like they're going to be one of the favourites all the way through this again. Nightmare. Anyway, that's it from us. Happy birthday to Rio for last week. Cheers to everyone who subscribed, commented, and liked the video. Continue doing that. Let's get your thoughts in below, and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.